The main reason why growth in large parts of the region is so high uh, or robust uh, is the strong domestic demand. So private consumption is strong by and large because of the strongly rising wages on the back of labor shortages. So the labor markets continue to be rather tight. They have uh, eased a little bit uh, compared to recently, but still they are relatively tight. And on top of that comes the expansionary um, fiscal policy and especially social policy in some countries, most notably in countries such as Poland or Kazakhstan. Uh, that is on the one hand and on the other hand investments are still so investment growth is still pretty strong although in some parts of the region we have observed a weakening of private sector investments but infrastructure investments remain by and large uh, strong and this is partly driven by the inflows of eu transfers and in some parts of the region above all in the western balkan countries also by investments from china within the framework of the belt and road initiative Yes, uh, of course, uh, most of the countries are uh, small and open economies and uh, the euro area and Germany in particular is a very important trading partner for them. For most of them is the most important trading partner. And the recent weakening of economic growth in Germany, well, probably there has been a recession in Germany over the past uh, two quarters, is translating into a weakening of the export performance also of uh, many countries in Central and Eastern Europe, particularly in the Visegrad countries, so in countries of Central Europe, which are very strongly linked with Germany in terms of trade and investments. And this weakness is particularly pronounced in countries which are uh, strongly specializing in uh, automotive industry, so car production. So we know that the car industry is having uh, not the best times nowadays, and this has also spilled over into parts of the of Central, Eastern, Southeast Europe. Also, partly some some Western Balkan countries, which have been increasingly integrated in regional value chains with Germany as the hub. For the region as a whole, we expect uh, growth acceleration, so by about but by more than one percentage point. But this is mostly on account of Turkey and Russia. So Turkey and Russia, these are of course the two biggest economies in the region. And in Turkey, we expect a rebound from the current recession because this year the Turkish economy is still in a recession, although the economy has been growing on a quarterly basis. And uh, we expect a quite a strong rebound of growth in Turkey although risks are relatively high, I would say the highest in the region, basically because of the geopolitical situation and large uncertainties with respect to how the geopolitical situation will um, evolve. And as far as Russia is concerned, in Russia we expect a moderate growth acceleration on the back of fiscal stimulus, but it will not be a big uh, acceleration and uh, GDP growth in Russia will still remain below 2% per year. For the rest of the region, the outlook is mixed. For the new EU member states in Central and Eastern Europe, we expect soft landing, mostly because of the um, protectionist risks, so mostly because of the risks related to international trade, whereas domestic demand will likely remain uh, strong. And for the Western Balkans, we expect a continuation of growth, as well as for large parts of the CIS region, apart from Russia and um, Ukraine. But there are certain risks, especially related to uh, credit expansion. So in some countries, especially in the CIS, the, we observe a very strong um, uh, expansion of consumer credit, and this may become a problem, especially in the medium term.